Hey guys, it's May May, and I'm all by myself today. That's a strange one, right? How is everyone? I see that you are vinning the video. I appreciate that. We will never get away from that, will we? If you don't know what that is, that means to like the video. That started in a uh, in another little class we were in, and uh, they started vinning the video, and I love it. I think it is hilarious. So what's going on? You got questions for me? I'm sure, right? Probably a lot after watching the video. I think the first question will probably be, why did you not make a card at the stress-free card making event? Y'all know me, right? You know me. <laughs> Here's a question from Jane Lackzak. I hope I say your names correct, guys. I apologize if I don't. How did you get started in this paper crazy business? Well, I used to be just like you guys are right now. I used to be enamored with YouTube and um, paper crafting and stamping. And I would watch the videos and I would think to myself, I think I can teach this. And I've always done all crafts. Well, that's not true. I can't, I can't knit or crochet, but pretty much all other crafts I love to do. And I just fell in love with the with paper crafting and thought, I'm going to try to teach this. And that's how I ended up doing it on YouTube. I just thought I could. And I always wanted to be a teacher. Like, that was always a thing for me. So that's how it happened. And I um I haven't looked back. That's been, y'all know we've been on YouTube. What's the, what is this? Have we been 12 years now? 12 years, I think. So I'm going to try not to get too deep in answering the questions because I can get real wordy. That's the Southern in me. So I'm going to try to do just a little bitty answer every time. And then if there's time at the end, we can chat more. Here's another question. Any other suggestions for the magnet if we don't have those slim magnets? I actually do have another suggestion, which would be super cute. And I thought about it last night in my sleep. I thought, you know what? Some folks are not going to try this because they don't have magnets, but you can make a belly band. Belly bands are your best friend because all they are is cardstock. So all you do is just take a piece of cardstock and wrap it around and then glue it together in the back and make it just loose enough to slip on and slip off. And it's the perfect closure. Now, Velcro is always an option as well. You can even make a little tuck. You can make something like this tucks into. But for me, if I don't have a, a magnet, if I'm out of magnets, a belly band is the way to go. Even consider making a belly band out of ribbon and just tying a bow around it. That's cute too. Good questions. Good questions. Hello from Buffalo. We are leading the Dolphins right now. 41 to 20. Okay, I do know the Dolphins are a football team because football is the world around here, but we don't really do NFL much, but my brother is a huge Dolphins fan. I'm going to say is. He was, but he definitely is. How did you grow into a brick and mortar store? You know, we never wanted to have a brick and mortar store. It was never, not that we didn't want it. It was never a dream of mine. Um, we actually started our first location just for shipping. I had like a 900 square foot little house and we just in we went into, uh, we turned one room into a classroom. And when I started, I was teaching cricket at the time. And when we started that little classroom, um, people wanted to shop, but all our supply, all of our products were in our little warehouse. And because of inventory, you couldn't just go pick stuff off the shelves. So we opened this one tiny room retail store. And I mean, tiny, it was like an eight by eight. It wasn't even a room. It was like a dining room of this whole house. It was like a pass through. It's like an eight by eight area. And people wanted to come visit. And so that's how we started. People would come visit and the retail store grew and grew and grew to where we are today. And our retail store is still not the largest part of what we do, but it's one of my favorite parts because it's where I get to meet you guys. It's where people come to visit. Um, and so that's how we started the retail store. We're from Alabama. When I say we, I'm just one part of May May Made It. I'm the May May of it. But um, we, our store is in Alabama. We're actually in the very center of the state. We even just recently got a monument stating so. Um, downtown in our little town called Clanton is the center of the state of Alabama. So they call it the heart of the heart of Dixie. I have lots of answers, don't I? May May, thank you for answering my burning question on where to place your cardstock when cutting it on the line or over the line. It has driven me nuts for years. So I hope I gave you the same answer that I have always given because I know I've answered this many times. But my answer to that, and this is such a valid question. How many of you struggle with that? Like when you're cutting on your trimmer, do you put your paper at the line, before the line? Do you hide the line of where you should be cutting? What I tell everybody is pick a spot and be consistent. 
if at the line works for your eyes, then do that every time. And then everything you do will match up. If on the line works for you, as long as you're consistent, like pick one and go with it, it should fix a lot of your issues. Do you use inks and papers from multiple companies? I do. I have some favorites, though. I'm not a person who orders every single one out there. I like to have, I'm more into the properties of the inks than like the 150 different colors of the inks. I'm, you, you'd have to watch me to know that. I'm, I'm pretty specific on my colors. But I love a good dye ink. I love a good um, put pigment ink. I love a good distress ink. I love a good, um, I would say glycerin, but like a stays on situation. I'm really more into the properties of inks, but I do use multiple kinds. I have a few Velcro. Is there a reason you don't recommend using Velcro? I have I have used and like using the magnets. Just curious if I can use the Velcro without a problem. I don't have a problem using Velcro. As a matter of fact, I've, I really use Velcro for a very long time. But these magnets have become so innovative and so easy to get and affordable that I've just kind of started using them. And the only thing about Velcro that I'll warn you about is after years and years of using it, it's going to wear your paper more than a magnet, but that doesn't bother me because I think what's so beautiful about an album is the wear and tear. I love to see something five, six, ten years old that we've looked at a thousand times. So that doesn't bother me anyway. So. Uh, question, are you the boss of your husband? You work together in your business. I am not the boss of my husband. Actually, my boss is uh, my boss is my husband. I have no issue with that. It is my business. We actually are 50-50 in the business, but uh, I am not his boss. Um, we make decisions together, and if we don't agree on one and he feels it's best, we go with his decision. That's the way um, we do our business, but I don't mind. I don't mind being told what to do. Everybody here will tell you I'm not the boss anyway. They'll make it real clear. What is one thing that you would share with us that is relevant to us now as paper crafters? Here's the one thing I'm going to tell you, and it's very relevant. Do not stress. <laughs> Do not stress. If you would like to try paper crafting or if there's something you see out there you want to try, you're not going to be perfect the first time you make it. But make it. See what it feels like. What does it look like? We put so much pressure on ourselves that no one else puts on us. No one does. If you make a shaker card and half your shaker elements fall out before you give it to the recipient, they don't even know that. They just go, you made this? Take the stress off of you. Just do it. Just try it. That's what I'm going to say is relevant. How often do I go live on my YouTube channel? Right now, we're going live twice a week. We go live on Tuesdays at 2. That's what we call it, Tuesday at 2. Um, and ours is Central Standard Time. I know today we're on Eastern. But all my time is Central Daylight Time, I should say, um, two o'clock on Tuesdays. And then on Thursday nights, we do two shows. We have the first one at 6 p.m. called The Crafter Show. And then at 6.30, we have The Crafter After Show where we just play and have fun. And I say right now because our Tuesday show is kind of a seasonal show. We only do Tuesdays when holidays are coming up or there's you know, a reason that we need to do more live shows or maybe there's new product releases and things like that. But so far, I'm loving the Tuesdays at two. So it may be something that sticks around for a long time. Question, do you use Catherine Puller inks? I have played with Catherine's inks before. I do not have them in my regular rotation, but I do have them. They have sent me some of their products before and they're beautiful products. Since I don't have much to say about that one because I don't have much experience on that question. Still got my T-shirt. I'm not going to stress about it. A classic may may. That's it. We um, we have some T-shirts that say I'm not going to stress about it. And that's the truth. You in your craft room, it's your domain. And, you know, I heard a guy the other day. I've, I've also picked my first love of sewing back up. So I've been sewing and I was watching this little guy. He's so cute. His name is Dave. And he said, I'm really bad at following patterns. He said, actually, I would rather do my own thing because if it's my pattern, it's always right. You see, and I thought that's exactly right. If we plan it, it's always right. Hi, May May. How do you get over the feeling of not being good enough to create cards to give to other people? This is from Kim. Kim, this is such a difficult one because I do this too. You know, we all have this kind of imposter syndrome. I look at people out there, a lot of my peers who are doing this event, I look at their cards and their projects and think, 
man, how do they come up with that? How do they think like that? I never can do that. But then I'll make a project and you guys will say that about mine. And so I think it's just perception. I think we just kind of put this pressure on ourselves that we could never make a card as good as that person when that's not really the standard. The standard is making a card to your best. You know, you're your only standard. We're the ones who put this pressure on ourselves. You and and I understand exactly what you're saying, because especially when I started in this business, I struggled so hard feeling like none of my projects were as good as someone else that was posting all the time. And then I realized I'm not making their project. I'm making my project. And I hope you can get that. I hope you can get a hold of that and it'll help you. And if you struggle with that, you know, find a group of people that you can craft with and you'll find that you craft similar to some and others craft similar to others. And there's a place for all of us. Christian, Meme, do you do all of your illustrations or who else creates for your brand? We do some of our illustrations. Some of our illustrations we buy from multiple different artists. What we mostly do is the the brand, the idea. Like, you know, we have a scripture stamp set line and this one's the one that's like close to my heart. I love both of my stamps lines. But my scripture one, what I try to do with it is I, the word is living and alive and I want it to be modern and to feel on trend. So what we do is we come up with the idea and then many times we'll search out art from different artists or I have a graphic artist that works with me named Sylvia. And she was not a graphic artist. y'all. She came to me as a second grade teacher and she was ready to retire out of teaching and wanted to go into something else. And I was like, can you use a computer? She's like, yeah, I'm like, well, then come and work for me because I can teach you. So I taught her how to do what she does. And now she and I and Shannon, my assistant, sit down and plan everything. And like we've got a series of things coming up um, really soon that Sylvia has taken the lead on and done. But then sometimes we'll purchase art because there are so many good artists out there. Um, and back in the old days when it was just me, I did all the illustration. So it's kind of nice to be able to reach into a, a pool of other illustrations sometimes. Question, if you didn't have Shannon, how would you organize your supplies? Deanna, you won't believe this, but I've gotten pretty good at organizing lately. I think it's come with age. When I was younger, I was very, 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 I can work in chaos. But the older I've gotten, the less chaos I can work in. And Shannon will tell you that too. I've even, at first I rubbed off on Shannon the bad way because when Shannon came to work for me, she was super, super organized. And then I kind of rubbed off on her and we kind of, we've kind of met in the middle at this point. Just just Friday, I was cleaning in here and she was working. She's getting ready for our event we have coming up at the end of October. So she was working on that. I was cleaning and I was like, Shannon, I've gotten to the point that if I don't clean between projects, I struggle working on the next project. And she's like, yeah, that's unusual. So that's where I'm at. I think I'd be OK, but I don't know. You never know. Without accountability, what do we do, right? Question, what is your favorite paper trimmer? Saw the, the Tim Holtz tonic review. My favorite paper trimmer of all time is the Cricut trimmer, and it's controversial, I'm sure. It is my favorite of all time. I love it. I have been using it for many years. Now, do I use other trimmers? I do. I love the Dress My Craft trimmer. I think it's fantastic. I love the Tim Holtz trimmer for my chipboard and my thicker items. I don't use it so much in my card making, but that's only because I struggle with some of my smaller measures in there. And so with my um, Cricut trimmer, I use it all the time, all the time. That's my fave. Can you explain your stamp of the month club for those who don't know about it? I'd be happy to do that. We actually have two clubs. We have one we call the original club, which ships out on the sixth of every month. It's a fresh, new, never before seen stamp set that we release to our club members. And it's only, I have to remember this, it's only 12, it's only $11.99. <laughs> If you sign up before the end of 2023, in 2024, our stamp club is going up. So $11.99 a month to be a part of the club and your shipping on that is free. We, we don't charge you any shipping. And so you get that stamp set and then you get a 15% off discount in our store for most items. There's very few items that are um, excluded, but there are a few that are. So um, that works in both of our clubs. Our second club is a scripture club. So those stamps ship on the 15th of every month. And again, fresh, new, never before seen. And um, club information is on our website at maymaymadeit.com. 
do those organizers behind you stack on top of each other? They can, but we don't because the top is also storage. So these are like ink trays um, and they're kind of stair stepped. It's hard to see in the video, but they have an open top. And so we put stuff inside of that as well. I'm interested in getting my illustration designs manufactured into stamps or dies. Do you have any suggestions? I do. If I were you, I would maybe reach out to some folks you know that have stamped, stamp um, manufactured, stamp lines, we should say, and maybe send them a sample here or there. Make sure you watermark your images. It's your image, right? So go ahead and watermark them. And may, not that anybody would take them. No one would do that. But I'm just saying to be safe. And maybe send out some of your imagery to folks and see, because if they're like me, and I know a lot of, I know a lot of my fellow stamp line folks purchase some their artwork. Not everyone, but many of them do. So reach out and um, see what you can do. Maybe send them a sample. You never know. We do sell these organizers behind us. Um, I think we have the smaller ones in stock right now. We had a little bit of trouble getting these shipped to us, so we're hoping to get these soon. But we have like a half version, and you can sit them side by side. Do you ship internationally? We do. I'm glad you asked that question. Somebody knew y'all keep me on track. International Club is $13.49 a month. And that's because it's more expensive to get that one into your hands. But it's $13.49 a month with no shipping on top of that. We take care of your shipping for it. And then that's good until the end of 2023 when our prices go up in 2024. <laughs> We're getting through them. Um, yes, we answered that one. Okay. Are any of your family members or kids interested into getting into the family business? I have four sons and three of them have worked in the business at some point in time. The only reason my oldest didn't is because the business came kind of after he was already in college and kind of established on his own. But um, my son, Josh, my son, Thomas and my son, Joe, have all worked for us at some point in time. They all are now working their careers and they're successful in what they always wanted to do. They're not anti the uh, business and there's been times when they've been off work and said, do you need help? And I'm like, yeah, and they'll come and help. And also, um, two of my daughter-in-laws, two of my three daughter-in-laws have worked for us. Again, that third one, Sam, who's married to Jared, they just were kind of out of the, they were kind of on their own before we ever really got started. But yeah, and they, I think they'd come back today if I asked them to. How do I store my papers? I have paper racks, those um, iron paper racks that look like you see in like the retail stores if you go in and they sell individual pieces. I have those and I love them. I also have a, um, a shelf behind me here where I like to keep, I love these. They're so awesome. And they store their paper themselves. It's so incredible. They come with the, you just rip this little piece off and then they're stored just like this. That's the coolest. They're what part of my favorite. And for my scraps, I store them in these bins. Everything's at my hand. I store, oh, I'm going to knock that down. Scraps are stored in these little bins like this. And this is um, like the, the color paper bin. And then I have a white paper bin and a black and craft, things like that. Okay. So confused a tad. If we join before the end of 2023, it will remain that. Yes. If you join before 2023, you can lock that pricing in because what will happen is that so we actually have to close that one out and start a new one to be able to use our new stamp pricing number. So right now my stamps are retailing for $13.99, but Club is able to get them for $11.99. So if you join before 2023, you lock in current pricing for the length of time you are a Club member. Now, if you ever cancel, let it lapse or something like that, it'll go to the new price because we'll have to sign you back up in the new club. I hope that cleared it up. You can skip a month whenever you want to. But again, if you skip a month at this price, it'll end up going to the new price. Good questions. Y'all keep me on my toes. This is usually what I call on the staff for. <laughs> do you show videos on how you use your stamp club? We do a reveal twice a month. So whenever whenever we reveal a new stamp set, we show you samples. And many times I show you either how to do that or we'll come back and show you that. And then we use our stamps periodically throughout as things go. I really use my stamps probably more off, off screen than on screen because I try to give the videos on my channel that are the, the ones that everybody wants to see. And so I can only film so much at one time. That's the problem. I wish I could just film 24 seven, but I can't, unfortunately. How do you store your stamps and dies? I have, this is not a stamp one, but I buy these little guys right here. I love them very, very much. 
And do I have a stamp set laying here? I did a card class yesterday, so I don't think I have a stamp set laying here. But I use the little clear sleeves and I put my stamp set in them. And if it has um, die cuts or anything with it, I store them all in here. And then I label these with the season or the type and I have them on bookshelves. Check out my craft room tour. You'll be able to see it exactly in my, my latest craft room tour. Um, let's see. Oh, somebody vented it. Thank y'all. Hit that like button. Uh, why did you put the yellow tape on your trimmer? Good question. My trimmer, which is here, <laughs> has this little piece of yellow tape on it. I'll get that where you can see it. And the reason for that is my trimmer does not start at one eighth. It starts at one fourth. And I do a lot of one eighth cuttings. So I just measured one eighth away from my cut line and put that little yellow tape there. So I know where one eighth is. I think I have a video on that too. What's the smallest? You got, these are made it's, aren't they? These are made it's asking me questions. What's the smallest size paper scrap you keep? OK, if I can stamp it, if I can stamp on it or I can use it in a punch, I will keep it. Other than that, it goes. So those are my rules. If I can, if I have a stamp that'll stamp on it like a sentiment or I can use it in a punch, that's when I keep it. I see you guys. These are made. It's asking me questions. They know are the hard ones. What's your favorite thing in card making? For example, I'm a die cutting queen. I like dimension. I like to make things either like I like to make an easel card or a pop up card or a fancy fold box or something like that. I like dimension. I like to take flat paper and make it three dimensional. Um, in card making, I also like one layer and simple projects because I tend to have to make a lot of cards. So sometimes I lean to one layer also. Good questions. Look, Irene's proud to be a made it. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you, Latina. I appreciate you so much. Request. I'm just throwing it out there. But I really miss the hide your word in my heart. Scripture art journaling. Just putting in my boat for a comeback. Thank you, Margaret Ann. That's funny. We've been asking if people would like to see that back. And we are actively searching for the journals as we speak. You know, before we did it, we had a journal that we all did the same one. That is not a requirement, but I'm trying to get those back in store so we can do it. And we're working on a new stamp set for it because I really think it's time. What brand of clear sleeves do you use? My favorite that I use are the Brutus Monroe cargo sleeves. I really love them. It's what I've used for umpteen years. Um, those are just my faves and, and they seem to fit what I use. Whew. I recognize some of these names. I'm, I'm not watching the chat because there's a lot over there. It's a lot of questions. Oh, yay. It's time. OK, so we got everything answered. I do believe I sure have enjoyed being with you guys and I cannot wait uh, to see all of your projects that you make. I've already been scoping on the Facebook group and I've seen some of the folios or the little mini albums and I cannot wait to see what you guys do with them. Cookie dough is my favorite for uh, distress inking on white paper. If you guys have not tried the Simon Hurley cookie dough ink for distress on white, you've got to try this. It is so pretty and it doesn't make it look kind of muddy. There's a community of crafters who create cards from May May stamps and post them on her site. There is on, we have, okay, here's what you can do. You can check out at maymaymadeit.com. Check out our customer gallery. You'll get lots of inspiration there, but also go over to our Facebook group, which is called May May Made It and So Did I. And you can share what you're making that's inspired by videos that I've put out or projects I've put out. Lots of inspiration. I think, I don't know how many members are over there. So a lot of folks you can get a lot of ideas from. Thank you, Sherry. Sherry says she loves all of May May's folios. I appreciate that very much. I hope you'll have a wonderful rest of your um, time. I don't know how much longer we have here. Is that it? I love you guys. I've so enjoyed this with you and I cannot wait to see you. We'll see you on Tuesday at Tuesdays at two, right? Bye guys.